my one, uh, team rehab, baby. Uh, my one at Tanga, uh, the T1, uh, my one at Tanga. Walk out all the dress up brand new, got everybody looking at you. No teams, no friends, no crew. Baby, TG for the TD2, say do. Walk out all the dress up brand new, got everybody looking at you. No teams, no friends, no crew. Baby, TG for the TD2, say do. Cranberry girl, you know Fruits I know of Fruits of Paradise is your favorite, but orange is mine, so okay. we're gonna get this too. Get that then. Okay, anything Great. else? I think we're looking pretty good yep. actually. Mm -hmm. So today, Spa Zimbabwe, our special friends, have invited us to Spa Joiner City, and we're here to get a few goodies and some treats for our special viewing party of episode four. That's right. This episode is sizzling. We got to sit down and chat with the founder and the mm. owner of 263 Chat. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. yeah. And I know you had a tour. I did a, a personal, personal tour, tour yeah. actually, of this hot venue, simply known as The, the venue. venue. Let's check it out. Again to Jambire Mujar, but in Nangeko Club, Mukadze, Timbo Spark, Wake, Shiri Team, my friends. So I had an idea or a concern about what exactly 263 chat is would you call it a, a project or is it a business it's actually it's, it's a business it's, it's a, a business. yes it's a, it's a business it's um a media house okay so, and, and was that a goal that you were working towards or you just sort of found yourselves i honestly stumbled across it okay. i didn't have a game plan when i started i just it was a hobby so i initially was just look let's just talk um let's just exchange ideas uh, I was just hoping that we would somehow replace the negative reports we get about Zimbabwe with the kinds of conversations we were actually having mm. um, about Zim, you know, so replace all the, you know, you Google Zim and, you know, all the stuff comes up and replace that with actual stuff that we care and, and, and discuss. That was really the idea. Okay. No, no game plan. All right. And, okay, in there being no game plan, were there any challenges? Or any limitations that you faced along the way? Yeah, there were. I mean, um, look, cost of getting online is yes. is, is a limitation. You know, imagine. it was it's cheaper now than it was back then. Okay. So um, we're two and a half years later. It's cheaper to get online, but it's still expensive. Uh, the cost of um, devices. So most people uh, in, in in this country get online using some sort of mobile device a tablet or phone or whatever and so it's still expensive for the majority of people um i obviously had to invest a lot of money in terms of buying my own airtime mm. so you can imagine how many how many dollars i'd go through just having a 263 chat discussion mm. um finding the best internet service provider was a, was a challenge so i went through through most of them mm. um until i found one that i was really happy with um, Zessa. Oh yeah. No. Zessa is a problem. So <laughs> you know, I know every Tuesday. I know that power's gonna go out and uh, the generator is gonna. And on those the days that you have the, the discussion. Those are the days. Oh, those wow. are the days. How so, perfect is that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I I believe in discussing things so that people are aware. But how far does it extend? Because. I did some research and about 25% of the discussions that you have are focused on finding out what the problem is or identifying a problem. And then the rest of it goes to getting ideas and um, opinions. Yeah. But how much further does it go? Are, we, are you just talking about it or there is a way that you implement some sort of change? Furthermore. Well, it's, it's, you know, we're no different to like a, you know, any radio station that has a discussion, okay. um, you know, and you have a guest and the guest talks and shares their view or whatever. Um, most radio stations do that. Mm. And it's not the radio station's uh, mandate, as it were, to go out there and fix the problem. That's true. You know, um, we're no different to okay. that. Uh, we do actually make an attempt. So if I, if I happen to know a policymaker who's linked to that particular discussion, I, we, 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 um, uh, we you know, curate the tweets okay. um, and we share the link and say, listen, you know, Mr. Honorable so-and-so, this, um, this is what's going on, did you know? And along the way, 
media houses are also now, like traditional media, also now picking up on the discussions that we're having. Okay. And they're also reporting on, on those great. things and quoting. Uh, they may not necessarily quote 360 chat, mm. but you know we know that, look, that, that, that article they published tomorrow was a result of a discussion that we had today. Um, so we know that. Mm. And to us, that, that was one of the, the, the objectives of 263 chat. Let's get mainstream media to pick up content because we are creating content. So um, where possible, we do initiate, uh, talk to policymakers. Uh, we talk to people, uh, especially the NGO community, because those are the guys who are actually doing stuff in the community, right? So we'll, we'll share and say, look, you know, maybe you missed out on this dis discussion yesterday. Um, did you know this how people feel? And there will be numerous examples. I mean, the issue on um, male circumcision, yeah, okay. you know, uh, was one example we used last year where we had the discussion and... Shortly after we had the discussion, you know, uh, could be a coincidence, but they changed the messaging of, oh, that's great. of of male circumcision. So what came out of the discussion was, well, I get circumcised today and then tomorrow I can still go around and have unsafe sex. And now mm -hmm. they've changed the message mm -hmm. to say, no, get circumcised, but you need to be protected. Okay. Yeah. Um, one last final question I have is regarding entrepreneurship in this country. Now, I read somewhere that our environment is one of the most conducive. And for me personally, I don't, I don't really quite fathom how that can be because of the tough times that we, we're, we're upon right now. And I just would have liked for you to help us, or me and the viewers, understand or to see how that can be possible in Zimbabwe. That's a good question. Um... Think of it this way, you know, like you said, you know, the tough times in this country mm -hmm. right now. Any tough time presents an opportunity. Okay. You know, uh, I gave an example of this and how that can be problematic, right? Mm -hmm. There's an opportunity for someone to provide power. Okay. Uh, p particularly solar power. All right. You That's know, a great example. Yeah. Um, there's an opportunity right there. Uh, but, you know, coming down to... Because I know those solar projects are, you know, a huge investment. But coming down to, our, you know, our level, so you know, my level, I guess, um, I saw an opportunity where I didn't like the media that I was consuming. Okay. You know, I was paying a dollar for this newspaper, a dollar for that newspaper, and I just didn't. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see myself in any of the articles they were publishing. Mm -hmm. So what started off as a discussion platform is now a media, a uh, small-time yes. media company, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've or we'll publish online. Um, we've got journalists in Lai, journalists here in Arare. Um, I'm solving a problem. And the issue here is sometimes we, and to answer your question now, we have these cool ideas, these cool business ideas that really work for maybe a Western country, mm -hmm. but we're not really solving a local problem. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do is identify the local problem okay. and solve that. Yes, we've got challenges with capital, raising capital. Um, we face the same issues, um, but you know, we also need to understand that we've got to put what they call sweat equity, we've got to put the work, yeah, we've got to do the work, yeah. you've got to do the work, mm. um, you got to do the work, and, and my advice for any uh, entrepreneur, especially a young entrepreneur, is just to keep at it, you know, two and a half years later, I'm still doing this, uh, this is now my full-time job. Okay, but... My concern is how for how it's I I it I struggle to make the connection because the money or and the time sometimes it it takes a bit too long and the patience if we're struggling and you have to pay rent and you have to eat no it's and true you provide it's true I mean look um, two six three doesn't make money from the articles that it publishes. Okay. That's a cost to the business. Mm. Um, we make money other ways. So we do a lot of social media management. We do a lot of social media training. We do a lot of social okay. media consultancy. And we stumbled across that opportunity because someone said to us, hey, you guys are always online. You know, okay. can you just manage my Facebook? And, you know, oh. and can you manage this? So, uh, and a lot of these um, these opportunities are a result of the relationships that you have with people. Okay. You know, so in my view, um, you've got to, you've got your phone, right? Mm -hmm. 
go through your phone book. You know, who can either lend you money or who can you provide a service to? Um, is there someone in your social circle or your family who needs a service uh, that may be linked to the business that you're trying to set up? Start with them. Okay. That's an easier sell than someone, a complete stranger. So the message is really persistent. Persistence. And you never know what keep, you could come across. Keep at it is what I'm going to say. Keep at it. All right. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us on The Teapot. And we look forward to seeing you again because we actually did not get enough time to discuss all that we wanted to. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Can you let us know where we can find you, your websites, your Twitter handles? Uh, 26 rechatcom 26 rechat on Twitter, okay. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, SoundCloud. Oh, 26 rechat All 26 rechat okay. yeah. Wow, well, that's it, everybody. Thank you for watching the teapot. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sir and you're watching the teapot. <laughs> Walk out of a dress up brand new uh, Got everybody looking at you looking No chills, no friends, no crew uh, Baby, uh, teach you for the titty tools they do Walk out of a dress up brand new uh, Got everybody looking at you uh, No teams, no friends, no crew uh, Baby, teach you for the titty tools they do So you know we like to give you the exclusive access to some of the refreshing and exciting venues around Zimbabwe. That is why we're here at this new location, known simply as the venue. Now this place took four years to design and is simply quite stunning. Everything from corporate parties to private parties to brand launches and even weddings. Come with us as we explore this brand new venue. And we are going to be sitting down with the beautiful Ratizai Mabika, the conference and sales coordinator of the venue. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I guess we could just get straight into it. Let's do it. Um, the first thing is the history behind this um, stunning spot. Okay, so the history is quite interesting, mm -hmm. I think, personally. Yeah. Um, it actually started with the underground. I'm sure you've got some foot footage mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. So it was just a private kind of club. Yeah. For the directors, or should I say the investors, it was just somewhere where their kids could go and just hang out and yeah. just, in his words, literally get away from our houses and yeah. stay away from the subs and mm. not make noise for their families. Yeah. So that's all that was there, <laughs> yeah. just the underground. And all of this that we're sitting in was literally mm. parking. Wow. Parking? So, yeah. So it was parking for <laughs> Pasangano Center. Oh, okay, so that's, yes. and okay. it was pretty much a dumping ground. Wow. as well so they saw that there was something that could be built from the underground and mm -hmm. maybe something interesting that could just be built in yeah. this area so our director also travels a lot and mm. international and he sees a lot of the world yeah. and does a lot of conferencing and there is a venue in Johannesburg in mm -hmm. Mara's Arch and also in Green Park. Oh, wow. So he saw that concept and thought, why not bring it here? He saw that there was a gap in the market mm -hmm. in terms of conferencing and banqueting mm. and all these event spaces yeah. and he thought why not bring something that's modern mm. that's technically advanced great no yeah. one is doing that here so he saw the gap there and said hey let's do it here mm. and then they started building. also so from adding from that the conceptual process the design process yeah. i mean how did all of this come together so <laughs> initially what they did they initiated and they started a relationship business-wise mm. with the venue and 
Johannesburg yeah. oh, and the oh, owners wow. there. Okay. And then they started talking and then they wanted to bring the concept here. Yeah. And then that's literally what they did. And then they spoke to the architects who made the venue there mm -hmm. and brought them here. Wow. And then we also enlisted some local architectures. Mm. So they came in. So it's a good collaboration exactly. of African architects and so designers. We definitely <laughs> wanted to bring in that local aspect mm. as well. And how long did it take? It took four years mm. in total to build everything. So I think that was difficult for them just because, you know, you want your return on investment as soon as yes. possible. So well, it was yes. a long process, wow. very particular. Our director, investor, she's very, she likes her details. And that's something that you immediately so, notice when you walk exactly. in is the attention to detail. I mean, just last night at the event, you know, you could see security was, you know, yeah. attentive. Um, you know, the staff with was very welcoming. Uh -huh. That's yeah. one thing we really focus on is high level of service. Mm. Or at least it's something that we're trying to bring back yeah. to her and I think it's something that we've lost. Mm. You'll see a lot of our barmen, coordinators and even yeah. our amazing chefs yeah. are, have all been trained internationally, mm. have all worked on in the international level yeah. and we're trying to bring that to Harare. Yeah. So that's really what that's we're fantastic. For. So what, what other services do you guys offer? So yeah. we do conferences, mm -hmm. banquets, cocktails, product launches, private parties, yes. private events or functions. Anything yeah. really. We are <laughs> flexible and adaptable. Yeah. We want to cater to whatever you bring to us. Mm. You yeah. even mentioned service and attention to detail. Yes. Is there anything else that makes this venue unique? I think what differentiates us on the market is technically. We, <laughs> I believe we really are at the forefront in our, you won't find a place that's as equipped as mm. we are in terms of what we offer. Even in our AV equipment, sound, yeah. everything is really up to date. Yeah. There's no one else who can compare mm. in terms of that. So if you want to have a party, you can come here. If you want to have a launch for your 100%. business or corporate, you can come here. Yeah. yeah. If you want a conference, come <laughs> to us. I heard you mention a wedding. You have a wedding that's happening soon. I'm so excited <laughs> and so nervous as well. It's yeah. our first wedding. 21st of March. So we uh, the thing is as well that limits us is just we can only do about 100, 150 people. So but again, small. exactly mm. small weddings. So it's our first wedding. Yeah, I'm really excited. We can't wait. Really yeah. nervous, mm. and I think it'll go well. Mm. And I think also what helps a lot is that everything is under one roof. Mm. You can get your cake made here. You get your wow. food. You get a coordinator. You get everything in one spot. Yeah, for on, honestly a really great price. Yeah. So I that think that's something that helps us. <laughs> um, and finally, yeah. the future of the venue. Where, yeah. where are we going to, what are you guys going to be doing? Is there anything new? So we do have mm. this Friday Hidden Culture yes. collaboration that we're starting. And we think it'll really bring a different market again. We just want to target as many markets as we can because yeah. we have the capability. So why not? Mm. You know, so that's a music aspect of that. Then we will also have the club at the venue, mm. which you can come in, you get a card. Yeah. And that's just for special shows. Mostly we want to bring African artists mm. in. Yeah. We want to really encourage Africa yeah. and collaborate. And we can do so much as a continent. We so agree. we want to bring mm. in those local artists in Africa. They come in. So a lot of them are from South Africa. Mm. But we also want to bring in some of our own Zimbabwe, Harare. Our yeah. local artists as well, so we're going local. to bring mm. them in into certain events sure. that we're going to do in the future. Well, thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. We've really enjoyed the tour and everything Great. fantastic about this venue. Wonderful. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed the show. I really loved the venue. That was a lovely location. The venue location. is the definition of sophistication. Yeah. And of course, Sir Nige always has some mm. phenomenal tips to share. Very insightful. Um, but you know what? I'm actually still taking yes. in our dresses. We're dressed by Chido of Doyen Lifestyle, part of the Sands Exposure Initiative. And our accessories, Coco, let's see those accessories, done by Decozy. We're really loving them. And of course, we have to thank VIP Hosting for always doing these elegant, classy setups for us. We also like to say thank you to the Zimbo Jam. And last but not least, Spa mm. Joiner for allowing us to come here and host our show and join a city, our home away from home. Thank you.